If you haven't heard of NFTs, you've probably been living under a rock, but most certainly not this rock. Uh, two days ago, the cheapest was th uh, $305,000. NFTs have been the hottest craze in the cryptoverse for the past few months, and in this year's August alone, OpenSea, which is the largest marketplace for NFTs, facilitated $3.4 billion worth of trades. Now that is a lot of JPEGs. So what exactly is an NFT? Well, it's short for non-fungible tokens and basically means it's a unique digital asset. So take ETH for instance, which is a fungible token. My Ethereum is no different from your Ethereum. They're really identical in every manner and worth just as much. Now, these penguins, however, which are NFTs, by the way, are a different story. They have different hair, different clothes, some are better looking than others, and they likely do not have the same value as well, since some are rarer than others. In this sense, each of them are unique, making them non-fungible. And it's not just penguins that NFTs have given birth to, there's also art, sports cards, gaming items, music, domain names, collectibles. I mean, it's really a big digital world out there. So if you're thinking that this sounds awesome, like how do I get myself into one of these? These NFTs, how much do they cost? Well, remember that rock we showed in the very beginning? Yes, this rock. It's actually called Ether Rock, which is one of the earliest NFTs ever created. So if you're planning to get one of these bad boys as a digital pet, you'd better be ready to fork out at least 500 ETH. You heard me right, that's 500 Ethereum or about $1.5 million. All right, don't be scared off just yet. So let's say that you still want the rock, but maybe you don't just have 500 ETH stashed under your couch. Well, what if I told you that there's a way for you to buy just a portion of the rock, like $100, $200, or however much you wanna spend? Well, that does exist, and it's called fractionalized NFTs. So stick around, because in this video, we are gonna dive into everything you need to know. Hey everyone, it's Gorgon Crypto here with CoinGecko and thank you for tuning in. So if you're not already familiar, CoinGecko is the world's largest independent cryptocurrency data aggregator. So CoinGecko has been providing comprehensive overviews of crypto markets since 2014 and is the trusted source of information for millions of cryptocurrency investors. So if you'd like to stay updated on all things crypto, make sure you click on the subscribe button and turn the notification bell on. Also, you can follow along on Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok for all the latest crypto updates. So we all dream of landing that one life-changing NFT that could propel us right into the yacht life, but as great as they are, there are a couple of issues. So for example, you could sell off your ETH or USDT easily and almost instantly with a quick visit to Uniswap, but not your NFTs. So just like traditional art pieces, NFTs aren't very liquid. And unless you're already a professional digital art appraiser, it's much harder to assign a value to NFTs since there are so many unquantifiable factors. They're also not good as collaterals, which just means that they aren't great when I comes to capital efficiency. And have I already mentioned how expensive these things can get? Well, lucky for us, fractionalization of NFTs have been made possible, which helps to solve these problems by making NFTs divisible and more tradable. In no particular order, let's go ahead and take a look at some of the exciting projects out there that focus on NFT fractionalization. So launched in April 2021, Uniquely is a relative newcomer to the NFT space compared to the rest. Through Uniquely, NFT owners have the option of locking their NFTs in return for U tokens. So for example, if you were to deposit a CryptoPunk, you'll receive U Punk in return, which represents your share of the entire U Punk collection. U tokens are fungible ERC20 tokens, which means they can be easily swapped for other assets on Uniswap, which you can think of as the Uniswap of U tokens. Now your NFTs can be liquid too. So U tokens also act as governance tokens over their respective collections. Now, as a U Punk owner, for instance, you have a say in which NFTs are to be included and whether or not the U Punk collection should be unlocked. When a vote passes for a collection to be unlocked, all the highest bidders will be able to claim the CryptoPunk they bid for, while U Punk holders will claim their share of the ETH earned. So just a quick note to make sure that you check all the bids before you vote yes. Now, at the time of this video, Uniquely has a TVL of 45 million. Now, Nitfex is another fractionalized NFT platform that was launched in May 2020, way before the recent NFT hype. And similar to Uniquely, you can fractionalize a single NFT or even a bundle of NFTs into shards. And as a shard owner, you'll also be entitled to a portion of any utility generated, such as 
rent from a digital land piece. Now, Netflix even introduced a new feature recently that allows royalty distribution to the original creators from the sale of shards, which is pretty cool. And just like Utoken, shard holders can choose to trigger a buyout by staking a certain amount of shards, which is then decided by the rest of the owners on whether it should be accepted. Now, at the time of this video being made, Netflix has a TVL of just over 16 million. Next up, living up to its namesake, we have Fractional, which is another fractionalized NFT protocol that has made huge waves within the space lately. So Fractional allows NFT owners to fractionalize either individual or a basket of digital assets into ERC-20 tokens, which have control over the total supply, distribution, and initial reserve price. Now, NFT owners who lock up their supply will earn curator fees on an annual basis, which is a percentage of the total ownership token supply. So you can think of this as the asset under management fees that you would pay to a fund manager. So just like Uniquely and Niftex, there's also an option to buy up the NFTs in fractional as long as the reserved price is met token owners can vote on what the threshold should be for this. And perhaps the most famous example that Grace Fractional is everyone's favorite Doge NFT owned by PleaserDAO. And as if this isn't already iconic enough, PleaserDAO grabbed the headlines recently after auctioning 20% of DOG on SushiSwap's MISO token sale platform. Now, the auction raised a whole $45 million, which gave the Doge meme a valuation of $225 million. So if you're a fan of Doge, instead of forking out generational wealth, you can now join its ownership by simply buying DOG tokens, all thanks to Fractional. Now, of the three protocols so far, Fractional currently leads the way with TVL at over $170 million, with the Doge NFT taking up over 80% of it. So we've explored how NFTs can be sliced and bundled up into a set just like a pizza, making them easier to trade, but there's also another way to fractionalize NFTs, and that is through indexation. Now, one of the projects leading the way for this is NFTX. So users can deposit their NFTs in return for V tokens on NFTX. For example, if you were to add two CryptoPunks to a vault, you'll receive two Punk tokens in return. Now, these Punk tokens, which are fungible ERC-20 tokens, can be easily bought or sold on SushiSwap. Now, you can redeem CryptoPunks with Punk tokens anytime, and no fees will be charged for a randomized selection but a 5% fee will be charged for targeted redemption. Now, these are the default fees set at the time when the vault was created, but they can be changed via a governance vote by the vault owners. So be warned, do not deposit any high value rare NFTs into the vault if you don't wanna lose them. So since the vault tokens are one-to-one -one redeemable for any NFT in the vault, they're actually good indicators of the collection's price floor. So for instance, if a punk token costs $40,000, then it's safe to say that the price floor of CryptoPunk should be around $40,000. So anyway, as of now, NFTX has a TVL of around 33 million. Now, NFT20 is another NFT index fund provider similar to NFTX with their own governance token called Muse. So users can deposit their NFT into various pools and mint 100 NFT20 tokens. Five of these will be taken away as fees to Muse owners, and the user will receive 95 NFT20 tokens. So if you think that your NFT is actually worth more than 100 tokens, there is an option to run a Dutch auction to set your own price. In this case, the transaction will be peer-to-peer -peer and your NFT will not be deposited into the funds. So what makes NFT20 different from NFTX is that instead of random allocation, it allows users to redeem specific NFTs with 100 NFT20 tokens. So if you spot anything that's worth more than 100 tokens, you better be quick in scooping them up. And most recently, NFT20 has been active in launching new interesting features, including a card game called NFT Royal and also NFT Flash Loans. Now, at the time of this video, NFT20 has managed to accumulate over 1 million NFTs valued at around 3.5 million. All right, so far we've learned about the different methods of how NFTs can be fractionalized, but how do they stack up against each other? Well, the bundling method used by Fractional, Uniquely, and Niftex allows users to break down your NFTs into smaller chunks, which gives small-time investors a chance to get a share of the pie, including their utilities like rent or interest if there is any. The flip side of this is that the NFTs in these are extremely hard to redeem and would require the entire collection to be bought out after passing a vote. What makes this even trickier is that every single NFT within the bundle will need to be separately valued since there's no common price floor for reference. Indexation, on the other hand, makes things a lot simpler when it comes to valuation and redemption. So NFTX and NFT20 help to create a price floor reference for each NFT collection, but because of this, there's also no way to value common and rare NFTs differently, which means that this method is only useful for the most common items. So you should 
probably put that zombie punk away. Now, judging from the TVL among the five projects, we can see that the bundling method by Uniquely, Niftex, and Fractional are the more attractive of the two options currently. But either way, fractionalization exists to help make NFTs more accessible, affordable, and ironically, more fungible. Now, compared to DeFi protocols, fractionalized NFTs are still in a very, very early stage, and it's gonna be really interesting to see where things go from here. And that is it for all things fractionalized NFTs. So if you'd like to learn more about this, you can check out the CoinGecko article on this, which is linked in the description box below. All right, so now that we've gone over everything, which method do you prefer? Which NFTs or fractionalized NFTs have you bought? So we'd love to hear your thoughts and experiences in the comment section below. And if you liked this video, and found it helpful, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell for more crypto tips and news.